humans have been hunting since 1.7 million years ago. Since Homo erectus, hunting is in our DNA, it's in our blood. And that passion of hunting has brought us to Bangkok to go hunting with this hunter. Now this is not a typical wild hunter. This is more of a sophisticated city hunter. Where occasionally you can strap a bow and arrow and get cruising for modern hunting. Let the hunt begin then. The 5-speed gearbox is smooth and sleek and the gear ratios are actually well timed. It also has shorter throws just like the classic. The clutch however is slightly on the heavy side especially in cramped traffic of Bangkok. But overall it has good feedback and is easy to monitor. A slip and assist system would have been nice here. You can feel the heat of the engine especially crawling in traffic. You can touch 100km with a lot of confidence and much less vibrations. A lower to higher RPM band transition is smooth and the new chassis actually inspires a lot of confidence. I felt that the Hunter rides best at the 80 km mark. The digital odometer displays the gear positions, trip meter, fuel level indicators and also will show you service reminder. Seats are wide just as the grab handles and both feel comfortable to sit and hold. A lot of weight has been actually saved in areas like the wheels, plastic mudguard and the sharp brake and trail makes it up for low steering inertia. Short exhaust, which I'm not a big fan from design perspective but has a role to play for the right center of gravity. And the flow pegs are also well positioned and does not scrape even when I was hunting at the go-kart track. Let's understand the arsenal of this hunter. This one is a single cylinder, two valve, 349 cc that turns out 20.2 brake horsepower and 28.7 Nm of torque, which is made to a 5-speed transmission with a multiple wet clutch system. Now this is all in textbook stuff. This also rubs shoulder with the Honda CV350 and the recent hype TVS Ronin. Now the TVS Ronin is 7 to 8 Nm torque less and then also weighs 20 kgs less. Talking about weight, this one has shed weight because this is based on the J platform which is the third model after the Meteor and Classic. And this one weighs about 181 kgs, which is 14 kgs less than the Classic and 10 kgs less than the Meteor. Now all that is good, but the point is, has a weight reduction reduced something? Yes, what I feel is, I am 81 kg. When I was driving all day, all night, what I felt was that the suspension really has not been tuned very well. Like in Classic, it really glides well. Meteor also absorbs all that soaks and bumps. But this one will give you a hard time. Yes. Then I asked a fellow rider who is about 75 kg. He also felt the same thing. When I asked a fellow rider who is about 95 kg. He also felt the same thing. So maybe uh, the suspension could have been tuned better. But overall in terms of because of reduced weight. Riding ergonomics is completely erased. The cornering for the city especially it's spot on. It's just not the weight which has been sharp. Even the wheel size is downsized to 17 inch. Even the wheelbase is now at 1370mm which is about 20mm and less than the classic 350 and 30mm less than the Meteor 350. The riding height, seat height is actually 800mm and the ground clearance is 150.5mm which is about 20 to 30mm less than the competition which clearly means that this hunter is hunting all the city dwellers. All meant more for city biking, more for a steady cruising and occasionally taking out to the hills this is a very compact size. Now, now even the rate angle is reduced to 25 degrees. Yes. All these fit in very well with the ergonomics because the handling is very nimble now. It's not going to give the first time buyers of Royal Fin a sense of bewilderment or sense of that they're buying into something very big. This is a very DNA of Royal Enfield but comes very, very smartly and very cutely packaged. You can see even the sitting position is quite spot on. It looks apart. All these geometrical and structural changes has made hunting with this hunter very agile and nimble at the same time. At the rear gets a twin tube emulation shock absorbing with a 6 step adjustable preload. Notice that the rear wheel gets a travel of 102mm only. It gets a semi digital instrument cluster which also makes a sweet rumbling noise the moment you put in the ignition. And the navigation port 
looks like the Scram 411. It's basically a very minimalistic setup so that you can focus on the hunting and not on the instrument. Let's talk about the tires and braking. Both the front and rear get alloy wheels in the Metro version with the front being 110 by 70, 54 P tubeless tires and the rear at 140 by 70, 66 P tubeless tire. Both are on 17 inch and that's a first for a RE motorcycle. For a hard bite, the Hunter is equipped with a 300 mm fixed disc with twin piston floating caliper while the rear gets a 270 mm disc with a single piston floating caliper. All this is coupled to a dual channel ABS. On the large, the brakes are on point and even high speed braking is quite linear. The lever response is also good but the retro version gets wire spoke wheels. The most important thing, the exhaust one. Hear it for yourself. Like it? Don't like it? Drop on the comments. And it's time we go hunting again. You see this party? This party is for the hunter. Well, after hunting this with hunter for more than 200 kilometers through day, through night, through open stretches, through swamp traffic of Bangkok, it's time we give a verdict. This hunter aims to hunt down all those who have been stuck with their 125 and 150 cc motorcycles, all those who have been bulldozed by the heaviness of a Royal Enfield. This will be priced a lot lesser. This is a very attractive position, but this is not a real classic Royal Enfield. My another apprehension is that the suspension could have been softened. It does not give you that good a ride quality as you would expect. And when you are cruising at 10 kilometers per hour, then the engine gets heated up. And for the first time, people who are migrating to Royal Enfield, that might be a very unpleasant experience. But it definitely packs in a lot of bells and whistles. They have really thought of a bike, ground up, and except the engine, everything else is new. And for that, it does deserve a standing ovation. Would love to know your thoughts on this hunter. Do drop in the comments below. Do you think Royal Emblem could have done something different to make this hunter even more exciting? Or do you think Royal Emblem should not have done this at all? They shouldn't have gone out of that market because Royal Emblem is a legacy brand. Royal Emblem is an aspirational brand. But whatever said and done, Hunter has got a party started. And for me, it's time to go and join the party. And the next time, you take care. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe.